Hey guys, Bowman here from BW1, and in this video, we're going to walk through the Windows 10 technical preview and look at some of the cool things that I've kind of done so far here with it. Be sure to check out our previous video that we did the Windows 10 preview installation. It's a technical preview installation. It's pretty simple, and I'm using Hyper-V to run it through a virtual environment. It's pretty cool. Check that out. Um, check out that video earlier if you want to see how the installation goes. But let's jump right into it here. So this is your desktop. One of the first things you're going to notice here, their new start uh, menu here. So the new start menu combines the start screen and it's and it combines the old um, start from Windows 7 so it's pretty cool now what this allows you to do is have your pinned apps right here the powers right here at the top so you can control your power options here at the top but then also you can control what applications go here and you can kind of move these around between live tiles and modern UI applications and um, standard ones too so if I want to move pictures I can just drag pictures over here and it's right there and I can resize it as well too if I want to make it a bit of a smaller icon uh, if I want to make Evernote uh, medium, I can make it a little smaller there. So I want to resize this to make it large. It's large like that there. And you kind of move it around. You can turn live tiles off. You turn them on if you want to as you go along. Pretty cool. And you can customize this out to where this thing can stretch across the entire screen if you want to. It's a pretty cool way that they combine both the modern UI and the standard classic UI together in this start menu screen here. It's pretty cool. And if you are sort of like ah, you kind of liked what you had in Windows 8. Some people did like the start screen. There's a way to get that back, but I'll show you that a little bit towards the end of the video. So that's one thing here. So the next thing is the multiple desktop. So that's the um, one thing I'm going to show you combined with the task view, which is this button right here. Now task view allows you to see pretty much a, 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 a sort of a wide layout view of all the different desktops that you have, and you can just click here to add a desktop. You can add multiple ones if you want to, and you can just kind of navigate through them. The multiple desktop is going to allow you to dedicate desktops to specific things if you want to, you know, one for work, one for games, one for school, whatever you want to do, one for the kids. You can kind of have them adjust around, and they all interact with each other as well, too. So let's say, um, let's say in this desktop, I want to move something. Let's say I want to move the browser to the, to the home screen. So I just hover over it. I go to the browser here. I right click it. You go move to, and you can move to any of the desktops. So I want to move to desktop one. And I've moved it over to desktop one. So if I go over to desktop one, you'll see that the browser is now here on this side, which is pretty cool. Another neat feature here is that in the task view, come out with the taskbar, you can see that there's multiple applications kind of scattered around. But let's say, like say in this window here, I have the store and news open. But let's say I go back to the desktop one here and I want to check the browser, but I want to open up the news and want to check out what that live tile is doing right now. So if I click on that, it's going to switch automatically to that desktop. So it's pretty cool. That's sort of a way to kind of multitask and it kind of saves some resources in doing that as well too. So speaking of uh, modern UI applications, you can see here they work completely basically as um, an app within the desktop. They're no longer sort of a separate full screen experience. Now you can shoot these, shoot, shoot this up and make it full screen if you want to. You can bring it back down here like this to make it a little bit easier to see. Pretty nice that it has that ability and it gives you the opportunity to use some of the really cool modern UI apps at the same time. Like the news is a pretty cool application to use. Let me bring that up. I might have closed that out. Actually, I did. But the um, I bring up the people tab if I want to to bring up my contacts. It's right there. Pretty cool. Pretty simple. Pretty, pretty nice. And it resizes. So you can see as I resize it down, it's going to sort of try to conform itself to work in the in the best way possible in the shape that it's in. So it's pretty nice. All right. So another thing here is the snap feature. So now when you snap Windows, it actually does a good job of um, let's open up uh, another. Apple, so of Chrome here. It does, it does a good job of um, snapping properly. As you can see here on the side, if I tap up here, it brings it full screen. And if I snap it to the other side, what it does is it kind of makes a little preview window if it's something underneath it. And I can kind of switch between two applications if I want to go back to the store. I can bring up the store and now puts it in a split screen mode. So it does a good job of resizing these a lot better for more multitasking capabilities, which is a Pretty nice thing. All right, we switched off to the other desktop. The calculator was on another desktop. Let's go back over here to Chrome, bring it back like that. So that's pretty cool that it's um, done a good job in sort of making Snap work a little bit better here. So I, I, one of those things I like. You have built in searches well too here at the bottom. You can just kind of do some searches. I actually recently searched for a BW1. You can tap on that there and it'll bring up the search box and you can see BW1 pops up here and you can see this is a 
modern UI app running. So it's running based off of the modern UI version of Bing Search, which is pretty cool. Once again, way to incorporate the modern UI and a classic UI application. It's pretty much all in one. It's really nice uh, that they kind of done that there. It's pretty um, quick here. Boom, bring it right in there. The browser's pretty, pretty fast here. Pretty quick loading time. So actually check out what you need to know about Windows 10 if you haven't checked out that article yet. So I can bring it up, it loads up pretty quickly. Nice. And you know, everything's been really fast and snapping. You kind of notice some of the different animations sort of pop ups with uh, Windows 10 as well, too. But this is technical previews of some of these things you kind of change around. So, you know, you want to be sort of um, uh, attentive to that. All right. So one of the other things I wanted to show you is basically, let's say you don't like this and you want the old start screen back. Well, there is a way to get that. So what you want to do is you want to right click on the taskbar and you want to go to properties. You bring that up. And if you go to start menu, you can use you can say use start menu instead of start screen. If you uncheck this box and hit apply, you're gonna have to sign out and sign in again. And one of the disappointing things when it, you do that, it closes all the applications out, which I wish it wouldn't do that. I wish it would kind of keep everything together. It would be kind of nice if it did, did it that way. If you just signed out and you open it up, all your applications come back. But just to show you here, I sign out. All right, and I'm gonna sign back here just a second. All right, now I'm signed back in here, and now what you'll notice is that if I hit the start button here, it brings back the start screen. So that's combining those two those two elements and giving the option between two. So if you're in a tablet UI or interface, you're probably going to want to use this more than you're going to want to use the start menu screen, but at least you have the option to switch between the both, both of them, which is pretty cool. Now, to get that back, all you need to do is right-click here at the bottom and task manager. I'm not task manager, sorry. If you want to right-click at the bottom, you just hit properties, go back to that start menu, hit use start screen, hit apply, Sign out and change settings. It signs you out again, and I'll sign right back in. And now we're signed back in again here. And if I hit the start menu here, you see it pops up with the new combined start menu here at the, at the side here. So it's pretty cool, pretty interesting, pretty snappy. So far, everything's been a pretty good experience. Um, I've installed a couple of applications, and they've worked pretty well. Um, we'll go into so you can show you my system view here, sort of how I have everything set up. Um, you definitely want to get a, if you're doing this in a virtual environment, you definitely want to give it plenty of storage. You can see the different animations popping up, the different icons as well too. See that the file explorer icon looks a little bit different. We go ahead over to this PC. See it says 12.3 gigabytes free of 24.4 gigabytes. So the installation is a pretty hefty one. Most of the time, the majority of Windows installations are honestly mostly drivers, so make sure that anything that you plug in works instantly. So you just want to be kind of aware of that. That's why it's such a large install so you want to make sure of that it's like the same sort of you know folder structure that we've kind of come used to since uh they've made the change in windows 8 the um let's see we have the 16 ram i have to set up as a as a quad core system with basically four virtual cores been pretty good so far in terms of speed and uh reliability let's see what else we can show you in here the right click functionality you can see on the side is still here which has been pretty useful i really do like that gives you a couple of more different commands that you can run with here on the side but other than that it's pretty cool what we're seeing so far in here uh, well i wanted to show you that all my drivers were installed as well too that's one of the things i wanted to show you let's see if we go to device manager pretty much all my drivers showed up which is pretty cool that most of them pre-installed obviously it's a virtual environment so it's a little bit different you might have some issues depending on what hardware you're using but if you're using something that's running windows 7 or windows 8 right now you should be good in terms of installing this as a technical preview just remember it's not the final build it's not the final fit and finish so you want to kind of you you know you don't i don't think you want to make this your main operating system just yet but it's um, something just to kick around and check out it's pretty cool i also you know it's synced sync my profile so you can see all my backgrounds of uh sort of showing up here as well too it's pretty nice i've also seen some people kind of complain if they're using a different virtual software that it's not giving you the full screen it's even at square i do know it works well and i have this going in 1920 by 1080 on my um desktop using hyper-v so you might have to use a windows based one just for the few folks that are going to be using it in a virtual environment which i think most people should do all right. Other than that, that's pretty much it here with my sort of my first look here into Windows 10 technical preview. I'll try to dig into this a little bit more. And as features and updates kind of come around, anything interesting that I see, I'll be sure to update you guys. But for now, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page. Follow us on Twitter. Become a fan of our Facebook fan page. Check us out on all of our social networks and on our main website at bw1.com. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up as it helps us out. And always remember to live your tech world in high definition. Thanks for watching.